In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the dependent sample's t-test statistic and the Cohen's d-effect size associated with that test. We're going to forget about these formulas for now though, and we'll come back to them a little bit later, but I want to start by introducing you to the data you're looking at here. These data map onto the example study that I mentioned in the previous video. Our research question there was, does giving people a free cup of coffee significantly change how happy they are? So first we have our index column. This just numbers everybody off just to keep track of our sample size. So in this study we have 15 different people. Then we have pre and post scores. These map onto happiness scores, which is what you're seeing here. So lower scores, by the way, represent low happiness, like a four out of 10, for example. Uh, and then higher scores represent greater levels of happiness. So pre-scores here represent how happy everyone was at the very beginning before getting that free cup of coffee and post represents how happy they were after getting that free cup of coffee. So we're going to start by basically calculating our different scores. This is the first step in any dependent samples t-test problem. Again, start by forgetting about the formulas, just calculate the different scores. That's always step one. Now in the last video, I introduced this concept by subtracting pre minus post. So here I would get negative two. I'll mention that while that works, that's perfectly fine. It's more standard to do the after minus the before, post minus pre. Think about why that is. Look at this participant here. They started out as a seven out of 10 and how happy they are, so pretty happy. But then after getting that free cup of coffee, they're a nine out of 10, really, really happy. If I did the before, the baseline minus the post-treatment, excuse me, minus the after, I would get a score of negative two. Well, a different score of negative two makes it seem like this person decreased in how happy they are. The sign doesn't make a lot of sense here because in reality, they increased in how happy they are. So if instead I do the after minus the before, I get nine minus seven is positive two. And this makes more sense because this person increased by two points in how happy they were. So that's what we're gonna roll with. Now, as I said, it's fine either way. You're gonna end up with the same p-value if you did this in a software. The only difference is that instead of a positive t-test statistic, you would get a negative one or vice versa. But the absolute value of the t-test statistic that you get would be the same in either case. And the same is true for the effect size. If you, you know, do pre minus post, you might get a negative effect size instead of a positive one, but it'll be the same absolute value. But in any case, let's go ahead and do post minus pre since again, that's kind of standard. So first we had nine minus seven is two. Now we have nine minus four is five. Nine minus eight is positive one. Eight minus six is two. Nine minus seven, two. Eight minus eight, zero. Eight minus nine, negative one. So again, notice this person actually decreased in how happy they were after getting that free cup of coffee. Eight minus five is positive three. Seven minus six is one. 6 minus 5, 1, 8 minus 7, another 1, 5 minus 9, this person became significantly less happy after getting that free cup of coffee, kind of rare. 3 minus 3 is going to be 0, no change in how happy this person was. 9 minus 6 is going to be positive 3, and then last but not least, 8 minus 9 is negative 1. So as I said before, step one, always calculate the different scores. Step two, completely forget about the original data you don't need it anymore, right? Everything you're gonna do, if you look at the formulas below, everything you're gonna do really is on the difference scores. So the difference scores is all you need. And so let's go ahead and illustrate that. So the first thing we need is X bar sub D, the mean of the different scores. In order to calculate the standard error, we'll need the variance of the different scores. The sample size is easy. We already know it's 15. It's the number of different scores we have, the number of people in the study, 15. For the effect size, mean of the different scores, standard deviation of the different scores. So notice everything is of the different scores and we can forget about the original data. So let's go ahead and do that. So the mean of the different scores, x bar sub d equals one. If you were to add up all of these values and divide by 15, you would get one. How do we interpret this? This means that on average, you know some people increase, some people decrease, but on average across everybody, people tended to increase in how happy they were by one point after receiving a free cup of coffee. So this seems sizable, but the question we're gonna ask in the dependent samples t-test is whether this difference of one is significantly different from just a different score on average of zero. So we wanna know, does giving a free cup of coffee really make a tangible, meaningful, significant difference? 
So next, let's get at the standard error. We already have the numerator. Let's start to work on that denominator. For the standard error, we need two things, the variance of the different scores, s squared sub d, and we're going to need the sample size, n. Well, we already have the sample size, super easy, that's 15, and we're just one step away. The variance of the different scores is 4.41. Hopefully at this point you're really comfortable calculating variance. Just because there's a D here, it's nothing special, nothing different. It's that same sample variance you know what to do for, but it's just on the different scores. That's what that D represents there. So now that we have all this, let's go ahead and uh, basically just complete our work for the t-test statistic. So t sub x bar sub d, the dependent samples t-test statistic equals 1 divided by and then for our standard error, it's going to be the square root of our variance divided by the sample size, so 4.41 over 15. And if you reduce this down, you'll get 1.85. Okay, what's left? The Cohen's DFX size, since we've done the t-test statistic, that's it for the t-test statistic. Now that we've actually done the hypothesis test, as is usually the case, the test statistic is... Uh, basically going to give us everything we need for the effect size as well. So all we need here is the mean of the different scores, which we already have, and the standard deviation, which is very easy to calculate now that we have the variance. All we're going to need to do to get the standard deviation of the different scores is to take the variance of the different scores and square root it. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 4.41, which comes out to 2.1. Okay, so now let's plug in and let's calculate the effect size. So d sub x bar sub d, this is the Cohen's d effect size of the mean different scores. That's going to be 1 over 2.10, which comes out to 0 0.48. And again, we interpret this the same way as we have in the past. This is almost a large effect. Remember 0 to 0.2, small effect. 0.2 to 0.5, medium effect. Anything above 0.5 is a large effect. So this is medium to large, I would say. And that's how you calculate the dependent samples t-test and the Cohen's d-effect size associated with that test.